you know that most of the tools on Instagram that you find are going to be pretty rubbish. But occasionally, you'll just find a little gem. Welcome to the Seca Dovetail Jig. Now, I'm a big fan of hand tool woodworking, and I think dovetails are one of those ways where you can really show off your skills. So, a tool like this might just come in handy to make that process just a little bit easier. So firstly, how does this become a dovetail jig? Well, basically, with these two folding out sections here, these are the super important parts. One of them is an eight to one ratio, and the other is a six to one ratio. Now, if you're not sure what any of that means, it's a simple way of getting a set angle. So an eight to one ratio would be eight inches up, one inch in, there you have the angle of eight to one. But why have they picked eight to one and six to one? Fairly widely known is a seven to one ratio is kind of the perfect average for dovetails. So I think the reason that they've chosen a six and an eight actually gives us two different choices. The six to one ratio will give you a stronger, more utilitarian farmhouse kind of look. Whereas the eight to one is slimmer, it's more delicate, it's going to give a more precise, a top end finesse kind of work. Now I'll show you a few good bits and weird bits in a minute, but this also has a few extra little functions. It has a 90 degree, nice and straight section as well for instant 90 degree action. And there's also this angle setting jig on the end of it as well, which can be used when you're laying up your dovetails or pretty much for anything else really. Now, before we actually start marking out some dovetails, let's just talk about the quality of this piece. Now, I've had some Seca tools in the past, and one thing I've always been impressed with is the quality of the piece. It's good, chunky metal. It's got some heft to it. It can take a couple of knocks, I think. Everything that moves has a really nice, firm movement to it. There's no slack. When you kind of move things around and set it, it's going to take a good knock to put that out of whack. But there's one little design part on here that I think they've done, well, a bit different. So the way that this is supposed to work, the whole purpose of these little porky outy sections is so that you can set them on top of your piece of wood. And while you hold that flat, that is going to give you the correct angle for your dovetails. However, there's a weird little part that I don't quite understand, or I think I might have sussed it out but I don't know whether it's right or wrong. And that is all about this top section here where it hinges. This nice straight line that comes up here flattens off at the top. And I'm not really sure why. Can you see there how that's a nice straight line all the way in? And then where it gets to the hinge part, it's flat. You can see where it's been flattened off. Now that might well be just a manufacturing thing, but I don't see why you couldn't manufacture it with the straight line continuing right up to the very end. Now what I have found with this little kink at the top here is when you use the 90 degree section to mark off the top, by sawing on this side of the pencil line, it actually then angles perfectly through the center of your pencil line as you cut down it. So if I start my cut just to the side of the pencil line and then angle my saw to run down, it actually runs pretty perfectly down the center of that pencil line. Now again, I can't find any information on whether that's a design feature or whether I've just found a way to work around the manufacturing defect. Leave a comment, tell me which one you think it might be. So let's put this jig into action and create effectively a draw front. So I have a nice thick piece that's the front of my draw and a nice strip of pine that's gonna go down the side. So let's do a nice half dovetail to slot one into the other. So first off, we can just mark off the width of the side piece then mark off however deep you want your dovetail to be. I don't want it to go all the way to the front because this is a, a draw. So I'm going to mark off that is the depth 
of my tails. Now, as much as these have 90 degree markings, 30, 22, 5, and there is a 45 in the middle of there as well, I personally would never use those for marking out a 90 degree square. There's too much play on your part setting it up. It's a tiny little line, and if you're a fraction out on that, it's not going to give you anything like what I would probably use that tool for is setting an angle that's already been cut and comparing it to see what maybe it's close to. But just for the sake of argument, there is the square that I use every day. And once this is set to that 90 degree, it does set the same thing. And that's as accurate as I can get that. So now we can mark off where all of our dovetails are actually going to fit along there. Now, of course, there's the tempting section on here to just put that in the middle and draw up both sides. But of course, you might not always want a dovetail that's that wide. So, of course, we can mark one side and of course, we could then move that over to create a thinner of course, you can do whatever setup you want. One of the beautiful things about doing dovetails on some handcrafted furniture is you can make up your own patterns that become exclusively yours. So maybe on this one, we can have a six to one ratio as a center dovetail and then an eight to one ratio on the other ones on the sides. And then using the 90 degree section, now of course with a marking jig it all actually comes down to your skill to cut the joint out. Making sure that you're following the lines as best you can, mark the tails across for the pins and then get to work with your saws and your chisels. But in the end, you do work out with something that looks rather lovely. So I suppose the big question is, is it worth buying one? Well, if you're struggling to mark off your dovetails, Yes, absolutely. Uh, it's very quick, it's very efficient, it is very well made. I've got to stress that because a lot of these Instagram tools that you might see advertised do look a bit shoddy and are a bit cack when you get them. This is actually really, really nice. I believe currently there is a bit of a sale on, so I'll leave their website. This is not an affiliate link at all. Um, I'll leave the Seiko website so you can have a look for yourself. Um, and I believe if you buy a pair of them, you get them a little bit cheaper and some free postage as well. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And if you think this is going to be useful to anybody, please share this video with them. Make sure you check out these other tool reviews because I think you'll love them. And until next time, click the subscribe button and the bell and I'll see you soon. All right. God bless. Toodle pips. Bye.